said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And because I live, you shall live also. Friends, my name is Reverend Katie Rickey, and it is my honor to gather here with you to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Ted Nicholson. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. So may God grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow we may find hope, and in death we may find eternal life. Let us join together and meditate on the words of the hymn in the garden. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we praise you for Ted, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ted P. Mickelson, age 89 years, in 364 days. Passed away on Saturday, July 4th, 2020 at Autumn Winds Assisted Living in Yankton. Ted was born in Mitchell, South Dakota to Mabel and Theodore Nicholson 
on July 5th, 1930. He went to high school in Woonsocket, went on to college at Dakota Wesleyan, go Tigers, graduated in 1952. He served in the U.S. Army from 1952 to 1954, and two years later, he married Nadine, and they were together for nearly 55 years. They moved to Norfolk, Nebraska in 1957, where he worked for Durland Trust Company, and in 1962, they came to Yankton, where he worked as a supervisor and door-to-door -door milk salesman for Meadow Goldberry. In 1970, he went into private business and started Mickelson Real Estate and continued until his retirement in January of 2015. Ted's passion was being an active member of the Yankton Elks Lodge, serving in a multitude of positions from exalted ruler, uh, district deputy for the National in 1977, and state president in 1990. Ted was also on the National Government Relations Committee for four years. He was active in receiving donations on behalf of the Elks National Foundation, which in turn donated grants back to charitable projects in the Yankton community. Ted also participated in Shriners, JC's Yankton County Commissioner for 12 years, and he supported the activities of the Yankton Chamber of Commerce. Ted and Nadine also loved Monday Night Mixed Bowling League, Ted was a beloved follower of all Yankton High athletics, and he loved his Minnesota Twins and Vikings. These are wonderful details of Ted's life, but what is more important is the impact that he had on all of you. So I'm going to invite his son, Craig, to come and to share a little bit more about Ted with us. Thank you, Pastor Katie. Um, 2011, I'm, we're at, I'm at this place right here, and Chuck Tinkin is with me, and he, he's helping me in the, in the eulogy for my mother. And now it's 2020, and, and uh, Chuck is gone. Uh, I, did hear, I did hear from May, May Tinkin and her daughter uh, the other night, last night, I think. You know what? Um, we're all... A lot of us are here because of something that happened in 1956 when uh, Ted and Nadine, uh, they married. And so, um, so that's, that's an exciting thing. A love of a husband and wife and the children that come forth and um, again the grandchildren and soon, soon great-grandchildren and the, and the things, things happen. Uh, I want to thank each of you, all of you, for coming today. Again, Hard, hard times, unknown times, scary times, uh, but times, times of friendship and fellowship and love and relationship. You guys came to support, support us and encourage us. We want to, we want to support and encourage you. And thank you, thank you for coming. You know, Grandpa Ted had a had a special place for for the young young women in his life. Um, his two daughter-in-laws, that'd, that'd be Irene and Jerry, they, they just love Ted. And, 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 and I would just, hard to describe, hard to describe that, that love that the daughter-in-laws had for Grandpa and that Grandpa had for them. I think, I think it had maybe something to do with him knowing his sons and then, and then handing his sons off to these poor daughter-in-laws and going to have to, uh, have to care, care for these uh, sons of his and, uh, and uh, help them through all of their challenges and weaknesses. Then we have Sherry, the daughter. We would put Sherry ahead of the daughter-in-laws, um, but, but again, we're gonna stay in this daughter theme. So Sherry, the daughter, the beloved daughter, the one and only daughter, the youngest daughter. Clark and I thought Sherry on occasion, perhaps, had more benefits of being the daughter and, and of being the youngest, but we're not sure, we're not totally sure. Um, so now we've covered, we've covered the daughter, Sherry, we've covered the daughter-in-laws, um, Irene and Jerry, and now we get to the adopted daughters. Would, would anybody who might be an adopted daughter raise their hand? There's one, there's two, there should be one more. There's three. I saw the adopted daughters all raise their hand. You guys did good, and you knew, and 
you knew who I was talking about. So again, we're, we're thankful for, for Grandpa. We're thankful for the life of marriage to Nadine till 2011. We're thankful for, for Dad's nine years post post passing of Nadine. We're thankful for the adopted daughters that cared for him when Sherry, Clark, and I weren't here or weren't close. So again, have I said thank you enough? Thank you to each of you, all of you. Okay. Um, I'm sitting Saturday afternoon um, after his passing, and I'm I'm there by his bed, and I I like to go to something in Bible Hub and, and read the devotion for that day, and I I pull up July 4th again. My dad has just passed. The room the room might be might be just me at the time, and there's this verse for that day, and the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Let me give it one more try here. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Do you know when you're 89 years old and you haven't, haven't shaved for about three or four days, you kind of have hairs sticking out everywhere. <laughs> they're coming out your ear and they're coming out your nose and there's, there's these long ones under your, under your neck. And so, so this verse now will take on a kind of a special visual trigger for the rest of my life. So let's, let's go. Have I painted a picture for you now on this verse? Do you have this verse down? So here we go. Again, I'll read it slow and I'll try to put emphasis. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So God knows every hair on your head. The nice ones that are well-groomed, the not-so-pretty ones, the wild ones, the crazy ones, the kinky ones, and, and all those hairs are all numbered. Um, have I made anybody nervous? Usually, usually the pastor gets a little nervous when, when they have to relinquish for a little bit. Are, are my relatives nervous yet? Because I'm all done and you don't have to be nervous anymore. <laughs> Yes. Every day, it, it made me feel good when he'd actually call me for help. <laughs> the, this, again, the special memories, the special memories in a, in a father loving the daughter-in-laws, loving, loving his daughter, the mutual joy of, of doing the morning crossword puzzle that would show up in uh, Yankton, Preston, Dakota, and the same crossword puzzle was in the Aberdeen Aberdeen paper, so so they would uh, they would uh, work on the grandpa would work on the puzzles, but then when he was uh, when he got stumped, he'd phone a daughter-in-law or phone a daughter. He'd phone a daughter. In fact, I think the protocol is he phoned the daughter first, and then and then Sherry would ask how many spaces, what letters do you have, what's the clue, and uh, and they make progress. But but there was there was a certain amount of interaction where Grandpa kept Irene in the loop by calling her periodically to involve, involve her in the crossword puzzle solution and in, uh, in, in figuring out the crossword puzzle and you, and you would be loved and you would be embraced and you knew that he cared for you. All right, thank you guys. Craig's a little bit taller than me. I hope that you do continue to share those stories and those memories with each other. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 103, 13 through 17, and this was chosen by Ted's children. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field. When the wind passes over, it vanishes, and its place remembers it no more. 
But from everlasting to everlasting, the loving devotion of the Lord extends to those who fear him and his righteousness to their children's children. Let us pray. Eternal God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This afternoon, we have gathered to honor and celebrate the life of Ted Nicholson and acknowledge the loss of his presence with us. I did not have the privilege of knowing Ted, but as I sat with his three children, Craig, Clark, and Sherry, I wish I had known him. From the stories that his children shared to the remarks of those in the church who knew and loved him, Ted was a remarkable man as some would describe him, a gentleman's gentleman. The scripture today from Psalm 103 has within it some themes that I think really highlight the way that Ted approached life and the ways that God revealed himself through Ted to those around him. And I think that is part of the reason it resonated so much with his children. And the first line is the most telling. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. To hear Ted's children speak of him and to share stories of their life with him, one could tell that Ted not only had compassion for his children, but he had great love and respect for them. From early on in their lives, his children were involved in what Ted was doing. They were included in those early morning milk deliveries and rewarded with breakfast at H&K. He would take his children to the races, to the fairs, to sporting events. Even Sherry remembers grocery shopping with her dad. And, and they did talk about those crossword puzzles that they could count on that phone call and they would spend time playing their favorite card game together. Ted was an involved and invested father to his children and through that example, revealed the same loving nature that God shows to all of us who love him. And as many of you know, as devoted as Ted was to his children, he was that much more devoted to his wife, Nadine. He was her rock, her caretaker, and her protector. He loved her fiercely and remained devoted to her and the life they shared even after her passing. So the psalm continues that God knows our frame and that we are dust. Our days are like grass, that as humans we bloom like a flower in the field. Now you could really look at that and try to and focus on the fleeting nature of our lives, that, that the days pass faster than we want them to. But I'd like for us instead to consider the image of the flower in the field. So I'll take a moment, since COVID-19 turned our world upside down, one of the things that I filled my time with is going hiking with my two young sons. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. You can imagine the energy level. So what we would do is, is go hiking with them and we'd go to state parks and walk along the trails. And my two-year-old has given me a greater appreciation for the little things that we encounter along the way. One day when we were hiking, he pointed out every single purple flower along the trail, and I can tell you there were a lot. One day he stopped to listen and mimic the sound of the buzzing bumblebees gathering pollen. Another day we heard bullfrogs, and to this day he can mimic the sound of a bullfrog. My son helped me to see the vibrant life in the world around us. If we stop and pay attention, to the flowers and the, field, and the grass in the field. We might be tempted to focus on the temporary nature of them, but the point is that they are vibrant. They are full of life, and they are given that life.
Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world and know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such faith that by day and by night, at all times and in all places, we may without fear commit ourselves to those dear to us, to your never failing love in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your son, Ted Mickelson and sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. These ashes we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Ted. Before he was ours, he is yours. And for all that Ted has given to make us what we are, and for that of him which lives and grows in each of us, and for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Ted back into your arms. Comfort us in our loneliness strengthen us in our weakness and give us courage to face the future unafraid draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another make us faithful to serve one another and give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen i would invite you all that we are, who are gathered here to share together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we hold Ted in our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time now and forever. Amen.
States, the States Army and Grateful Nation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones honorable and faithful service.